hey, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to use makefiles inside VS Code. Makefiles have been around forever. VS Code is, is fairly new, but they work together very well. Uh, I love both these tools and I love how they come together. Uh, I'll show you how to do a number of things using makefiles and how that integrates with VS Code. And if you stay to the end, I'll share with you why I think makefiles are not going anywhere. All right, here is my little C project and I'm gonna use it to demonstrate how makefiles work to you. So I'll just show you the code. I'll show you how it works. We'll run it a little bit. And then from there, I'll show how to translate that to a make file. And then we'll, we'll go into seeing how it works in VS Code. So this is my program, uh, flip coins. All it does is it seeds a random number and you give it some number of iterations and then it flips a coin, printing whether it's heads or tails. So I'm just gonna build that. I, I build it using GCC, then I run it. I'm gonna run it 100 times. Look at that, 50 heads and 50 tails. That doesn't happen every time because it's random. There we go, that seems a bit uh, more likely. And we can run it. What happens? Look at that, now we're talking. As the number of flips gets bigger, we tend more and more towards 50-50, right? Like at this many flips, we're probably always in the four nine zones, right? Let's see. Yeah, now we're like four nine nine six. And the more numbers we add on, the closer that's gonna get uh, to five. The, the closer we get to half, I suppose, when I give it 5,000, it's getting close to five. So that's the program and how you run it. To, to use a makefile, we just basically encode these steps into a makefile. So the, the structure for a makefile is always that you have a target name, and then you have prerequisites, and then you have your recipe that you run. So the input that I have is just my single file, my coin flipper dot cpp. And when that file changes and I run my build, I want to produce a new target. So that is what this step does, right? Once I've produced a target, the next thing I want to do is run it. So I have my run target here and my run target has as a prerequisite this coin flipper step. And then it just runs it with an input of 10. I don't really have a test step. There's no unit test in this, but I did put together a test target where just to make sure my random numbers are working, I'm gonna run it with a large amount and we can just visually see like, okay, does it seem like it's 50-50? And then the last thing I have is a clean step where I'm just removing that stuff. So th this is a simple make file. Um, I've also set up a default goal so that when I just run make in general, it's gonna do a build, right? If I wanna do any other step like a clean, then I have to specify that or a run right? That it all makes sense. Now to, to use VS Code to do a makefile, I mean, I'm, I'm already in VS Code and I'm already using the terminal. So you, you can just do this, but VS Code obviously has a lot of great extensions and there is extensions to deal with makefiles. For instance, if you go to your extensions and you search for makefile, you will find this one produced by Microsoft, Makefile Tools and uh, you want to install that. It, it says it's a preview, but it's actually been out for a while and it's got a ton of downloads. So just install that. Then if you use this little gear, you can go into extension settings. And in here, um, you can see that it is quite customizable. You could change the version of make that's being used. You could add some special paths. I actually do have um, the default version of make on my Mac uh, is a little bit old. So I do actually have the newer version installed in Brew here. So I, I could tell it, uh, please use Gmake rather than Make. I'm not gonna do that. But once you have this installed and you open up your make file or a project with a make file, you get this nice side menu. I believe these are called perspectives or, or slide out menus. I'm not really sure. But from here, you can hook up your make file. For instance, set my configuration to default, set my build target to, what was my build step? It was coin flipper. So that's my build step where I'm building my coin flipper. And then you can see, yeah, my launch target when I run it is to run this coin flipper 
dot out. So we have here our coin flipper dot out. If we do a make clean, then oops, it's gone. We do a build, then we can see it's back. And then if we do a run, then we can see, look at that, it ran 47 heads, 53 tails. So that is a, a kind of nice make file integration in VS Code. I'll probably just keep using the terminal because it's kind of what I like, but this is super neat and I think you can add more things. Uh, yeah, you can configure clean. There, there's lots you can do there. So why would you be using this combination of VS Code and make files. Well, I like make files because they work with any language, they work with any tool. And as you can see, there's integrations everywhere to make them work. They're, they're just very flexible. You learn how a make file works and you know you can use it in lots of places. And it's great just also for this kind of like test runner steps where you're just you know specifying some, some actions that you do in your development environment. If you are looking to learn more about building software, check out some of my other videos here on the Earthly channel. Uh, I work for Earthly. Earthly is an open source build tool. If you like software development, if you like make files, uh, Earthly is kind of like Docker for builds. It lets you build software locally in your CI using a, you know, a simple kind of make file-esque, Docker file-esque syntax. It, it, hard to describe in a quick video. But uh, go to earthly.dev, check it out. It's in the description. I, I think you're really going to like it. And if there's other videos you'd like to see, uh, please let me know.